Hi and welcome to day two of Hedgehog Hollow's relaunch. So today I'm absolutely delighted to be able to tell you that I'm working with Elizabeth Craft Designs on my, their affiliate programme. I've loved Elizabeth's designs for many years. I've met her a few times at some trade shows and I think she's really a talented designer and a brilliant crafter. Today I actually have two projects for you. One will be linked exclusively on the blog and the other is we're going to give you a, few tu a full tutorial here on YouTube. So the one that you can visit here on the blog uses the Distress Oxide background that we made yesterday. I'm going to show you some simple stamping on vellum and then I just cut out a frame. The second uh, tutorial that we'll be doing here is how to make this gorgeous birthday card. You can make this for men or women and the three different designs come in a pack for different occasions. We're going to show you how to get all the different variation of colour through here and how to do some tone on tone stamping. So let's get started. So here are all the supplies that we're going to be using and I actually have um, four different styles of cards I'm going to be showing you how to create. Um, when I first started with this stamp set, this is the one that I showed you on the intro that I'm going to um, also run through. But I got some new supplies come in today and I started making some of these too. So I made this set of four, all mounted the same way, and I'll show you how to mount these. This is just using um, the Stampin' Up banners and I just mounted them up in different colours. Um, but I'll show you how to get all these different um, shades and some tips and tricks for that. We're also going to go through doing an ombre style where it fades out to the middle. Then I have this one, which is done um, using distress length and two different hues of the same color so that you get some variety in there. And this one is just a plain old stamp it out and I've got some tips and techniques there for you as well. So the key for when I did these was to use um, the distress paper. Now I was quite a skeptic of this paper when I first saw it. Um, I thought I'll give it a go and it really does make a difference when you're particularly stamping with the distress inks or when you want to get um, a more glossy effect uh, but not using a high gloss paper because most inks won't dry. So I'm going to show you all uh, four techniques. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a stamp press and we're going to do the multicolour. So that's like the banners here or this one here. They're both done in exactly the same way. For this, a stamp press is um, quite a key piece um, to have in your uh, itinerary. So the, uh, the distressed paper comes pre-cut like this, and I'm just going to use some of my temporary ta uh, painter's tape to hold it in place. Now the one thing I will say about the Elizabeth designs is they're a very deep photopolymer, but they are also very sticky when you first get them. So I did um, stamp down a piece of paper and it took a piece of my cardstock with it. So I will show you before we get started with stamping how I avoided that. So I'm just popping some tape all the way around so my cardstock won't move, like so. So we'll just pop that down and we will start out doing the pig out. So let's grab our pig out of here. So this is the stamp, you can see it's photopolymer. As I say, it's very, very sticky. So what I did first of all was I popped it down onto this side of my stamp press. I took my stamp cleaner, move these out of the way. I liberally sprayed it with cleaner and then I just used my stamp chamois to wipe it all away. And that will take away any residue that's left on the stamp and that stopped it adhering. But it'll still keep your backside sticky so that it sticks to your blocks. So now we're ready to ink up our stamp. And to do that, I found the best way was to take some of the temporary painter's tape and just to mask off the areas that I didn't want to get ink onto. Let's see if this one's wider. So first of all, I'm going to start with these banners. And just because some of the elements are quite close together, I found that this was the best way to get a good impression. And I'm just going to very... And I would be quite a light hand with the distress pens. Mine are very juicy and you can get a skewed, um, a bit of a splodgy result if you're not um, quite light with them. Um, and whilst I don't mind unevenness on this stamp because I quite want it to look rustic, I don't want it to come out too splodgy. So there we go. And we're just going to, oh, remember to peel your tape off before you stamp. That could have been messy. And we're going to stamp it down. 
and they're still quite sticky stamps so it's often worth just popping your finger under there uh, just to help catch it. Then we're going to completely clean off our stamp and we're going to go and move on to our next colour. So the next thing I want to do is I want to ink up my little piggy. So I'm going to ink him up here, like so. And I think I might do a pink star down here as well. So we'll ink those two down. And again, just pop your finger underneath if you find it's getting sticky and just work very slowly about pulling it up. Again, wipe off your stamp. And now we're going to go back with a darker pink and I'm going to do the pig party. And doing it one colour at a time uh, will stop any cross-contamination and if you over-stamp on an area, it won't go muddy, it will just... Um, you will not notice. Okay. And you can see what I mean about them being quite sticky. Uh, if you didn't have a stamp press, you would find going back and adding colour over and over again quite difficult. So again, I'm just rubbing this off. And now I'll just go through me adding all the other colours in until we've got a complete picture. finished um, item and then you can just mount it up as I did here I did some slightly different colors this time around and when you saw me erase my little mistake I just used a sand eraser which was right here so let's move on to our next one which is even easier and let's grab another piece of the distress cardstock here and we're going to put this down like so and there'll be lots of close-up um, pictures on the blog which are high quality so you can zoom right in to see details and this time I'm going to take the congrats which says you're excellent so excellent pun in there and then I'm just going stick my finger under there and we're just going to stamp out just using this new uh, waffle flower ink it's a lovely yellow tone And you'll see how crisp and lovely these stamps really are. So like so. And you can see that lovely colours and the best of cluck that came out there. Um, so that's just a super easy way of doing it. And I particularly like these new uh, waffle flower inks. That's why I wanted to show you them today. Uh, they dry really quickly. They've got really bright, fun colours. Um, and you can also blend with them. Uh, they're dye based. There's lots and lots of things you can do. I'm just going to turn this the other way up to make sure it will still fit. And I'm going to clean off our stamp and I'm going to show you in contrast how you can add some extra colours to give more depth. So this time I have spiced marmalade and wild honey from Distress Inks and I'm going to start off by putting down some wild honey, move that over, and then I'm going to take a piece of kitchen towel that I'm just going to moisten with some water, like so, and so it's very lightly damp, and I'm just going to very gently pick up a few areas, and then I'm going to go down and try and pick out roughly the same areas, and you can see I'm using quite a light touch there to add in some spiced marmalade. So again, I'm going to stamp that down and I'm going to go back in with some more wild honey just on those areas that we missed. Okay. 
and this is the thing with the distressed inks and also using a stamp press is I can keep going back over and over again so again I'm just going to pick in a few little places if I want to go darker and I'm just going to make sure they blend nicely with that damp kitchen towel because I don't want harsh lines and I'm going to stamp those down Oops. there we go and you can see there if I bring this up to the camera you can see how you get those lovely yellow and orange tones which is a lovely ombre effect it brings me on to our final technique which is how to use ombre pads on these stamps so I'm going to use the third stamp so that you get to see that one as well so this one is a thank you and because of the cow I decided to do my vintage ombre pad from Hero Arts which is uh, black, grey and silver and it gives a lovely effect and again I'm going to use that uh, speciality stamping paper so I'm just going to grab another piece out of my packet and I'm going to stick this down and this is the one that we will mount up and I will show you how to do that lovely tone on tone stamping so this is the ombre pad and what I did get the lid off okay is I put the silver element towards the middle so I tried to hit roughly the middle with the silver element and then if you just dab it slightly up and down you don't get those harsh lines then I turned it over so again the silver was back in the middle and I got it roughly in the same place and I always put the lids back on when I'm doing a video because otherwise I put my arm in it. And I'm going to stamp that down. Yeah, let's take my finger in. And you can see, if I bring this up, you can see those beautiful shades that you get in the ombre. And I'm just going to clean my stamp off. And we'll take that to the side just for a moment. So using exactly the same stamp, this thank you stamp, and I'm using some desert sand, the Nina cardstock, which I have linked up to in the blog post. I'm just going to fold it in half so it's card sized. And I'm going to pop it down on here. I suggest you start nearest the fold and line up your stamp like so. So it's lined up perfectly in that corner, almost like a T-square style. And then we're going to stamp again with waffle flour with the Coffee Loves Milk. And this will give you that lovely tone on tone. So I'm going to ink it up. And I'm going to stamp over. Then I'm going to give it a quick wipe. And I'm going to stamp it here, just right next to it. And it doesn't have to line up perfectly because this is just to look like a nice contrast background. And again, I'm going to link it up and bring it over and if you don't get a good impression I wouldn't re-ink it because otherwise it will get darker I would just go back and if it's a little bit patchy um, it'll just add to that aged look so again I'm going to do this in the top and you'll find that your stamp will just slightly on the eight and a half by eleven just peek out the top but that's fine because it is a background And finally, I'm going to do it again on this side, and I'm going to leave that margin there because I'm going to cut that off in a second, which I will show you in just a moment. Do it again. I'm going to stamp that down, like so. The next thing I'm going to do put my stamp press to the side, sham it out the way, is we're going to cut off this margin. So I find that this lines up perfectly. If I line this up with the yellow um, edge here, it just gives me a nice cut and it makes me a nice notelet size. So we're going to take our kindness move and I'm going to take my, my, my favourite things stitched round rectangular frames and I'm going to take the smaller size and I'm going to run it through my Big Shot twice. So once to cut my purple frame and 
you'll just hear my vagabond going next to me. And I keep these scraps for future projects. And I'm just going to grab my tweezers because I can just poke my tweezers here into this hole and pick it out. You could use any pick for that. And then again, I'm going to pop my card down and I'm going to use the inside of the frame this time to cut uh, this. And I'm going to just tape it down with a little bit of post-it tape. And I'm going to do it one opposite corners. And again, I'm going to just run this through the vagabond. If you don't know what a vagabond is, it's an electronic big shot. So I just press a button, which is what you can hear, and it pulls it through. And then I have my die cut, like so. Which I'm going to take out there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer these two together. So I'm going to turn them upside down, pop this inside the frame, and then I'm just going to use some sellotape. And I have a pre-cut sellotape dispenser that I um, just clip over my hand. And so it has pre-cuts like this. So I put one on either side of my frame and this will just hold it as one flat piece. The great thing with these dies are is you can lift them up and put them down so you can have different levels. And I'm just going to use some dimensionals on each corner because first it will help hold the corner together and it will give me the dimension on my card. And I put one in the middle too, just for luck. And we will pop that into the centre of our card. There we go. And that's our finished card. So we've given you lots of techniques today. We've shown you how to make your own um, ombre effect using um, distress inks. We've stamped it out just as normal using the waffle flower. We've done the ombre. And then we also used our distress pens to give you these multicoloured options as well. So be sure to visit the blog post if you uh, would like to know our colour combinations and for full supply lists. And be sure to subscribe to our channel as all week we'll have video tutorials for you as we relaunch Hedgehog Colour. Thanks for stopping by and happy stamping. Bye.